Good afternoon, everybody. It's a pleasure to be here amongst my fellow colleagues. Thank you, Prof, for that um, well-researched and articulated, well-delivered paper. I will start the discussion by attempting to answer a question that he asked. He said, um, or he asked, what is normal? And how is it different from the new normal? So please, I just want to ask all of you, just look at the hall. Look, just turn back if you're in front, just look at the hall where we are all gathered, and then you will know or try to attempt to decide on what is normal and what is the new normal. Previous um, conferences held by Ixan were well attended. In fact, there was one I attended, there were no seats in the hall. I had to sit outside. That was the normal. What we see this morning is the new normal. There are people actually attending this conference online. Things like that had never been done before, at least in Nigeria. So this is the new normal. What, what we are seeing now is the new normal. And for corporates, for corporation, it impacts or it would impact a great deal. The topic was, or the topic, topic given to Prof and I were emerging trends in corporate governance and its implication on business continuity, which is basically how will businesses continue in the new normal? So that is what we are here actually to discuss, the new trends and how businesses will continue. So boards in this new normal have a lot of responsibilities. COVID-19 has disrupted how businesses should be run, I think forever. The impact of COVID-19 on corporates will be told in years to come. So boards have to play a balancing role or a balancing act to satisfy their stakeholders. For regulators, they have to satisfy regulatory requirements. For shareholders, they have to continue to add value to the investment of shareholders. And for their workforce, they have to pacify them. There are so many things now that corporates will do for their workforce, which had not been done before. And then for the communities, they have to have an image, their reputation has to be called to bear. So I've just listed a few things. And also after listening to Prof's paper, I've taken notes and tried to infuse some of the things he said in some of the notes I made. One trend which will change is board quality and effectiveness. The keynote speaker mentioned some things when he was reflecting or um, applying the go corporate governance principles to the economy, as it were. And he talked about effectiveness. Boards will no longer run business. It will not be business as usual because there are so many things that they will need to take into consideration in their board meetings. The issue, the, the, the norm of having, um, or putting a limit on board meetings would change because things have changed. More than ever before, the stakeholders will be closely watching boards to see how they effectively run their businesses. Effectiveness in the sense that, like a prof mentioned, you don't, when, when shareholders at AGMs now choose board uh, members, they will be looking at their effectiveness, not whether I'm related to that board member or whether I have it, it comes from my home ge 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 geopolitical zone. The effectiveness, how he's going to manage that business in the new normal, capacity, efficiency, competence to manage the new normal. Those are things that AGMs or shareholders will be looking at to bring board on board members of the board. And then boards would also need to be vigilant as they navigate businesses their policies, their decisions, how they make their decisions in the company. Management as it were also would need to change because management brings policies and procedures or guidelines that need to be approved at the board level. Management also, management processes also would also have to change. Boards would also have to reevaluate business philosophies and core operation principles. 
as you would see as I go up, as I, I, I go further in my um, discussion, so many things are going to change in the business environment. So policies that were in place before would also need to change. Procedures, processes would also need to change. Another emerging trend that would change in corporates is the corporate culture of organizations, which would impact on the decisions that will be made by boards. Human capacity. We all say the, the our greatest assets are our workforce. With the health concerns with COVID-19, it has changed the way the workforce operates in, in the office. We know during the lockdown, a lot of corp corporations, a lot of organizations did not realize that they could actually work from home. But the work lockdown actually brought out some ingenious ways of actually carrying on and doing businesses. It has changed, it has changed forever. Some workforce or some staff even prefer to work from home now. They don't want to come into the office. So that would actually change the culture of work in, 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 in organizations. It would also, boards would also have to determine, do we need a physical office? How many staff do we need? Which staff do we need? So these are decisions that boards would need to sit down and take and which would affect the workforce. Some people will be laid off. Some have to be trained and reskilled to be able to operate in the new normal. And all this would impact on the finances of corporations. So boards would have to sit down and actually determine, as it were, determine how the organizations would run. So board would increasingly have to engage with management frequently to be able to approve these things that are coming from, from uh, management. So culture of work has changed. I don't think it will ever remain the same. Another um, trend will be the shifting of shareholder primacy. Hitherto, every organization or, or corporations took their shareholders as uh, a mainstay. But the, the new normal will make organizations also begin to consider other stakeholders that are very important to the continuity of the, of the, of the existence of the business. During the COVID-19 lockdown, some businesses were wiped out totally wiped out, which would greatly impacted on their liquidity, impacted on the finances of those organizations. So those, kind, those organization, organizations now would have to sit down and think, who are my key stakeholders? So the primacy of shareholder has kind of diminished because for some organizations, they found out that their, their, their key stakeholders are their suppliers are their suppliers. If they don't supply um, the raw materials to make your goods, how will the investor get value for the investment in those organizations? So the primacy of shareholders has really shifted in the new normal. So organizations have to sit down and actually juggle and find out who are our prime stakeholders and come up with policies and procedures to protect the interest of those shareholders for the good of the organization. Another issue globally, which is a trend and is being affected by the new normal is the ESG, environmental, environment, social, and governance issues. Those um, issues will come to bear when investors want to make investment. Prof in his presentation just said that the UK has said by the year two, 2030, they will do away with gas, diesel and gas and create jobs for about 250,000 people. These are issues that are being discussed globally. And in Nigeria, we need to begin to think about this because there are some investors that will not invest in anything that is not green or that is not social, that will not have an impact in the society where the organization is. So these are issues that boards will need or and management, we need to sit down and think about because they are beginning to come into the fore now with the new normal. So ESG should be integrated into the investment decisions of corporations under the framework of sustainability. If you want to sustain, if you're in a, in a community where the community takes its environment very seriously and you want to be, continue to do business in that 
community, then you have to take the environment ESG issues very seriously. Climate change and sustainability are critical issues to some investors and should, at, at the, and should be at the forefront of governance in the new normal. Stakeholders, especially investors, would want to know how boards would provide adequate oversight of technological risk, disruptions, and cyber risk. These are all things that investors would want to know how the board is going to take care of them. The, um, also, um, CR, CSR issues, corporate social responsibility issues, all those will come into fore. And we know that COVID-19, as Prof said, is initially started as a health, a health issue. So those issues are still there. If I'm going to the workplace, I want to be sure that I'm safe even in doing my business. Every worker wants to know that they are safe. So those, these are issues that you, um, companies might want, might probably want to spend more. Hitherto, these issues were not there. So companies may, may need to have to spend more in making sure that their employers are safe in the workplace. And then with the COVID-19 emerged a lot of risks. These risks have to be taken care of by corporates. If not, it will diminish the value of shareholders investment or the corporation as it were. A lot of risk, reputational risk. In years to come, people will look back and wonder how did you as an organization handle the COVID-19 uh, pandemic period? Hindsight, what should I have done better? Some corporations are doing things now because of COVID-19 that would impact on their reputation in the community they live in, with their investors, with regulators. So there's re reputational risk at stake and boards will need to sit down. And for every decision that is taken, there is a consequence. So, this, so decision, decision taken by boards is very critical now. You have revenue risk, revenue stroke safety, you, some some um, organizations might have to weigh, where do I put my money? Do I put it in safe, safety issues or in investments? Or, so there's a lot of juggling that needs to be done in the new normal by boards and management. You would have the liquidity risk, you have technological risk, disruption, cyber risk, um, how to protect your technology to be able to operate. Activism, activism of investors would increase in the new normal and boards would have to sit down and determine how to handle investors' concern and activism. In fact, corporations are beginning to be their activists, looking at their processes in-house and looking at vulnerability areas where investors would um, pick, up, pick on and cause some, 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 some trouble. So corporations should be their activists looking inward and making sure that these areas are covered. Another critical area that has shifted or that will shift in the new normal is compensation. Compensation, compensation be received by executives, compensations received by management, compensation received by other employees. During the lockdown, there were a lot of um, staff that were on the front lines. They call them essential services. So these staff that were there, when every other person was at home, were they paid more? Did they receive more um, salaries or were they given bonuses? When you look at their pay vis-a-vis -vis what executive, is, um, uh, executive in, the, in the firm is receiving, how do you compare it? So these are issues that COVID-19, the new normal has brought to fore. Compensation committees would have to sit down and now review rewards. Is it performance or pay? At the beginning of the year, when we didn't even know this was going to happen, boards went on retreats and they had meetings and structured um, agreements with their executives on how they were going to get rewards, stock options, cash, in whatever manner. So what has happened to those agreements? This is what COVID-19 has done. Targets were set for these executives or targets were set for institutions that at the end of this year, 2020, this is what, or at the quarter, quarterly, this is what we're going to do. All that have been disrupted. Forecasts were made by companies, all that have been disrupted. So 
what does management or what does the board do? This is the reality of COVID-19 really, because things have been disrupted, things have changed, agreements were entered. What are the legal implications of these agreements? What are the legal implications of these contracts? These are things that the board will have to sit down and handle. And then the business environment as is where, when COVID-19 happened, some corporations had um, disaster management procedures in place. Some of them were adequate, some were not adequate. This is the time to actually rethink those procedures. How, if this continues, how do we handle it? Because nobody knows when the pandemic would end. We don't know when it's going to be post, actually. There's no date. Nobody knows. So how do you handle these issues day in, day out? These are critical decisions that boards need to sit down and make. Standard operating procedures have changed. The guidelines have changed. And for the business to continue to run and for you to be able to satisfy the yearnings of your stakeholders, these issues have to be tackled. You have to sit down and handle them. And um, Prof in his paper had talked scrupulously on conducting business um, online or e-commerce, which is where the world has gone. So if, you are, if boards are not thinking of how to mitigate physical presence of doing business with e-commerce for any business, this is the time to do it. This is the time to do it. Um, going into um, corporates, how they hold their meetings. The Kama provides for um, private companies holding their meetings virtually. It hasn't been provided for public companies. But CAC, the Corporate Affairs Commission, came out with some guidelines on how companies should hold their meetings. That is just a new development, which will continue. It won't, it's not going to end. It's not going to end. Companies will begin to have their meetings virtually. Voting will be done virtually. So it is it's left for organizations to put structures in place to ensure that shareholders are not disenfranchised. That all the rights of shareholders in Kama, in the Corporate Governance Code, are still adhered to. So the new normal is actually would actually make corporations think of how to comply with rules and regulations, but in a new and better way. That is corporate governance. The, the, the principles of corporate governance are still there. But the, the challenge is... How do we comply with these codes, laws, rules, regulations in the new normal? It, and it's not only the corporations that would have to put on the thinking box, regulators as well would have to do the same. Rules and regulations would have to change. Timelines would have to change. For instance, during the lockdown, the SEC rolled out um, timelines for, or new timelines for reporting, quarterly reports, annual reports, every reporting, it was extended. So these are, these, these are things, the new normal is not only for corporates, it's for everybody, both regulators, the government, everybody. So everybody has to put up on their thinking caps to ensure that the rules, regulations, codes that are in place are complied with because if we do not comply with them, then corporate governance is out of the window. So we can't say because there's a new normal, we will not comply with your reporting. You will not comply with what you need to do, comply with the procedures in, 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 in holding an AGM. No, those um, um, guidelines, rules, and codes be complied with. But we have to do it with technology, creativity, and dexterity to ensure that these things are done properly. So um, basically these are my comments or, dis or comments on the paper that um, um, Prof has delivered and I hope that I've been able to make some sense. Thank you.